Looking at the Pinebook Pro feature from last week, a lot of you have started receiving your Pinebook Pro shipments. And so these little quirks are coming up and we're starting to see some comments coming in. BP9 was posting in our Discord server today, which is why I have my phone with me. I'm not being antisocial, I'm being social. See how I did that? Uh, BP9 was having trouble with the keyboard. The D key was kind of sticky and not quite working and found that he was able to very carefully pry up that key and get some compressed air underneath and blow out underneath of the, uh, the contact. And for some reason, that fixed it for him. So I'm glad to hear that the D key is now working. BP9 also mentioning that while I showed on my Pinebook Pro that a quick tap on the uh, Pine logo and F11 would enable and disable Wi-Fi, and that seemed to work fine for, for our demonstration last week. Um, he's mentioning that on his notebook, on his Pinebook Pro, he had to actually hold in that key sequence for three seconds. So if you're finding that it's not having an impact, perhaps that's the difference. Follow the same tutorial from last week on how to get the Wi-Fi working on your new Pinebook Pro, but try holding it in for three seconds if my demonstration of really quickly tapping didn't do it for you. So that's good to know as well. Um, the final thing that BP9 mentions is that um, his keyboard came preset up with the UK keyboard layout. Well, that could be frustrating because your keys are not going to be in the right spot. So basically ISO layout versus ANSI. And so you'd have trouble entering your password and things like that. Interestingly enough, when I booted up and fired up Manjaro for the first time, it asked me whether I wanted ISO or ANSI. So I went through that process of telling it what keyboard layout I had, and it worked just fine for me. But in uh, BP9's case, that wasn't the case, and he was very quickly able to go in and just change the keyboard settings within the menu system, found his way there. Says uh, it wasn't a big deal. It was a simple fix that I didn't even need the wiki for since I knew how to change the layout already. And BP9 also, incidentally, from our community, mentioning that the wiki has proven itself to be a fantastic resource. And you'll find that at pine64.org. And it really is. It's a community-driven site. And so as problems come up, folks are posting there on the wiki in kind of like a documentation format to be able to help other folks who are encountering those same issues. Ryan Howard is on our YouTube channel and says he's unable to get the OS uh, for the Pinebook Pro burnt onto an SD card. He asks, please, how do you do this? A video would be great. Well, here you are. This is video, so I, I will do this thing. All right, so the first thing that we need to determine is whether we want to use an SD card or the built-in eMMC. Um, and there are a couple of things that would be kind of a deciding factor. SD cards are a really, really easy way to be able to switch back and forth between multiple distros. You got to kind of pop, you push in if you have one in there, and then it pops out. So that's my SD card right there. I think I just ejected my OS while it's on. Uh-oh. <laughs> Don't do that. That's like pulling your hard drive. But the built-in eMMC can be a little bit more challenging to uh, to set up. But think about this. One of the things, and I'll, I'll touch on that, I'll explain that, but one of the things I like about SD cards and the ability to boot from an SD card, yeah, sure enough, I just crashed my system. Uh, I'm going to reboot. Um, the nice thing about uh, being able to boot from an SD card is let's say you've got a household um, where everybody shares the same devices. So you could give each family member, for example, or maybe you're an education facility and you want to give each student or each teacher their own SD card. So you set up the operating system on that SD card and everyone who goes to use it with the power off boots from their SD card and all their applications, everything else uh, is set up on a per user basis and nobody affects any other user because the SD card is in fact their booting hard drive. Now I just proved that doing what I just did while stupid did not destroy my Pinebook Pro operating system on my SD card. So that's a good thing. So that's kind of cool because with your own SD card you can just boot it up and have your own settings. So I like that. Um, if you've settled on the distro that you'd prefer, it may be time uh, to install it on an eMMC. 
but it can be more involved, as I mentioned, because it requires sometimes opening the Pinebook Pro and you've got to use a special adapter to flash it. Um, but the process itself is the same even in that case. So if you have the adapter, you're going to burn to an EMMC. I use the term burn. Um, using an adapter plugged into the USB port or something like that. Uh, and it's going to be the same process. You're going to use the same software. You may have to use a different image depending on which distro you're looking at. But speaking of, there are some distros such as Manjaro that actually offer an installer. So if you burn it to an SD card, then you boot the Pinebook Pro, you can then install it to the EMMC. So you don't have to open up the Pinebook Pro. You don't have to buy an adapter to be able to flash an EMMC card. Um, so that's pretty brilliant. You've got to look through the, the wiki or the website of the individual distro that you're looking at. So we're going to head on over to pine64.org and choose the distro that, uh, that we're going to download. Um, so you just go pine64.org, click on the wiki, and go to Pinebook Pro Software. Now I'm going to go with Manjaro because we know that it's tried and true, it's the one that's coming on it. Um, and I've actually downloaded Debian on my SD card, so I'm booting from an SD card um, normally. So this is Debian running off of the SD card. We're going to change that in a couple of moments. So uh, next step is we need to get a tool to do the burning. We're going to use a tool called Balena, Bal Balena, Bal Balena. How do you say it? I don't know. And I'll explain why. Balena Etcher. It used to be called just Etcher. And as a TV show host, those were the days that I miss. Balena, B-A-L-E-N-A. -E and the reason it throws me off is because I am an old school Trekkie. And so I always want to say Balana, thinking of Balana Torres. So think about Balana and then think, oh, it's the opposite of that. Balena.io slash etcher. Now, while I'm going to be doing this on my Windows machine, you can also do this on Linux or Mac as well. So Balana, ba, Balena, <laughs> Balena.io slash Etcher. Download it for your platform, okay? First thing I want to do on my machine is make sure that no removable media is connected to the computer. Be sure, okay? This is step one. Back up. Pull all of your USB drives. This means unplugging the USB storage, anything that is plugged into the computer, SD cards, whatever, if you've got an SD card reader or something like that. Reason I do that is because we want to prevent accidentally wiping the wrong storage. If you've got a couple of USB drives plugged in, you may accidentally select the wrong one. And remember that this is a destructive process, so you're going to lose any data that's currently on the drive. So in, can I call it Etcher? In Etcher, select the image file that you downloaded. In our case, it's Manjaro. Uh, plug your card into a card reader, uh, or again, if you're using EMMC, use the adapter. Uh, and you do need to buy that adapter separately. Etcher should detect and pre-fill in the select drive section the moment that you plug in your drive. Click flash to begin. And on Windows, it's going to ask me to click to allow the administrator access. Uh, Linux or Mac are instead going to request my root password to proceed. As I mentioned, this is a destructive process. It's going to wipe whatever's on that card. So make sure that you want to proceed, okay? and then do so. All right, once the image has been written to the card, Etcher will verify that the write was successful. This may take a few minutes, so hang tight. And once that's done, if it said you were successful, you can remove that card, insert it into your Pinebook Pro. And uh, again, I'm using the SD card, so you simply plug that into the slot on the side. If you're using the EMMC, you're going to need to install that internally. Power on your Pinebook Pro and it should automatically boot from the SD card. If you're using EMMC, make sure that no SD card is plugged in before you power on. Otherwise, you're not going to have uh, access. It's going to boot from try to boot from SD. So there we go. Um, I'm trying to brighten the screen. Can't quite do it. You can't quite see, but I am looking at the Manjaro login prompt. Fantastic. There we have it. We are now booted and running our new distro, in our case, from a micro SD. 
And if you have trouble, try using a different SD card first and foremost, okay? Just in case the card has any problems. Sometimes there's compatibility issues. I haven't encountered it yet on a Pinebook Pro, but it could happen. So have a second card handy. That's the first thing you want to rule out. Um, and uh, also, if you still have trouble, as I mentioned, get into the Pine64 community resources like their forum, check out their wiki, join their Discord server, uh, or you can even hop onto their, uh, their subreddit as well. They've got an official one. Um, for the full list of all of the places that you can get help, visit their website at pine64.org.